Hey, what's up, guys? All right, so this chapter is kind of broken up the same way last week's chapter was. And as far as it doesn't focus on just one fight throughout the chapter, it actually focuses on three. So the chapter is actually broken up like this. It takes place during the Noel versus Fauna fight, the Asta Mimosa versus uh, Real fight, and the fight going on between the Black Bulls and our Magic Knights versus the Fodder Elves outside of the castle. All right, so let's start off with the Asta Mimosa fight versus Real because I, if I'm being honest, that's the fight out of the three of them we got in this chapter that I actually was the least excited about reading and basically the fight's going pretty much how you expected mimosa's doing her best to support asta asta's doing his best to fight off against real's paintings but because he can't have the, he doesn't have the time to basically relax and actually and activate his black form he can't really do much against real and he can't actually land a solid hit on him he's just basically on the defense the entire chapter and it kind of comes down like the fight kind of the last part of the fight that we actually really get to see it, to like its full extent is mimosa getting on Asta's back and then using her flower magic to combine the two of them. I guess like, uh, as we see in it at the end of the chapter when we see like the back of them, it kind of looks like Mimosa has wings going on to her back. So I guess this would be like a way for Asta to have more mobility for him to basically use her wings, if that's what they were actually, to fly around and actually get close to real since he doesn't have the time to actually activate his black form. Plus even if he did, his black form as we already know is basically like a heat seeking missile or a magic seeking missile. As far as even if he were to activate it, he can't just go fly up to a rail. It basically would be him having to use his black form to fly around and destroy all the magic around him before he can actually go out and attack rail. So it pretty much this is actually a better suited for him to fight against him. But then again, we don't know if actually will if those wings actually work or not. But even if those weren't wings that we saw at the end of the chapter, Mimosa and Asta combining in this way still is beneficial for their fight because with her being this close to him and basically being on his back the entire time, she can use her healing magic on him pretty much anytime she wants without him having to actually stand still. She can heal him while he's still in the battle. Alright, so like I said, we also get to check in with the Black Bulls and the other Magic Knights that are out there fighting with them, going up against the Elves, and we see that they're doing their, they're doing some damage. They're actually, you know, putting up a fair fight. But obviously, these are Elves who were taken over the bias of Golden Dawn Mages, and as we already know, the Golden Dawn Mages are already some of the more powerful mages in the entire Empire. So, in order, so of course, they are actually kind of more on the defensive than they are actually on the offensive in this fight. That is until you know of all people actually finally shows up after all this time with an army of Magic Knights at his, at his back, basically to help save the Black Bulls and the other Magic Knights who were fighting against the Elves. And you know what? This actually finally answers the question that I've had, and I'm sure a lot of you have had for a long time now. Where the hell is you know? And it seems like after he left Hockey Village and he went with that Purple Orcas member to head towards the capital, on their way, they kind of just stopped and picked up a whole bunch of other Magic Knights who were either fighting against Elves or who weren't you obviously aware of what was going on and gathered them to basically create a small army in itself to basically take back the capital. Which was smart. It's actually a pretty smart plan to actually gather as much forces as you can in order to fight. It's basically the same thing that Asta did, except for Asta just went to gather his friends instead of actually gathering, you know, actual people to help out, like basically building an army like Yuno did. So yeah, Yuno finally showed up. We get this little moment between him and Charmy where she uses her food magic to basically help him recover his mana. And then she tells him basically what the whole situation is, the fact that Asta, Noel, and some of the Magic Knight captains went inside the ca that black castle in the sky in order to fight against the big bads. And just as she's explaining that to him, and Asta, and you know, thinking how he can get in there to basically help out Asta, the magic stone on his on that he wears as a necklace starts glowing. It creates a light, and then him and Charmy fly up there and actually enter the castle. Now, this is a good thing and a bad thing. It's good because you know is a very powerful mage. He actually will be a big help in the fight against these top tier elves. But at the same time, this is basically you know putting the magic stone that the elves want to gather, the last magic stone they need to complete their plan. Basically, him bringing it to the castle is kind of like him delivering it to them. It basically makes their chances of success even higher than it used to be. So it's kind of like a double edged sword here. You get a very powerful mage, but you also up the chances of the elves succeeding in their plans. Now, when the two of them enter the castle, they actually do end up getting split up like everyone else did. And we see that Charmy at the end of the chapter actually ends up with a fight with uh, Asta Mimosa versus Real. So it's actually going to be kind of interesting to see exactly how she can actually help out in this fight. Because so far, I mean, Charmy, we've seen that she actually is kind of strong with her attack magic. But she's mostly been used as someone to help the other mages recover their mana by using her food magic. But in this situation, while that would be helpful for Mimosa in order to like keep her to be able to heal Asta more and more. And when it comes to Asta, since he doesn't actually have magic, 
it won't really be that helpful in a fight against uh real actually you know what? i just thought of something what if what if charmy actually ends up using her kind of magic kind of like a kind swab and use it to absorb the paint from Lil's painting magic and his attacks in order to give Asta a chance to actually get in there and attack Lil head on. Actually, we, that would actually be kind of funny and something I could see Tabata Yuki actually coming up with when it comes to her combining her magic with Asta's. So we don't end up finding out where Yuno ends up in the castle at by the end of the chapter, but I'm guessing since Charmy ended up with Asta Mimosa that Yuno's probably going to end up with Noelle since those are the two fights inside the castle we focused on in this chapter. And if I'm being honest, I'm hoping that that's not the case. Because I was actually looking forward to this fight between Noelle and uh, Fana the most. Because I looked at this fight as a way to finally establish exactly where Noelle is power-wise in the series. I mean, I always, I kind of figured at this point she might be at least at the level of a Magic Knight Vice Captain. But this would actually be the fight to actually confirm that. Because as far as I'm concerned, Fana and Veto, when they were reincarnated, they weren't actually at Captain level. They were, I mean, as we saw in the last chapter, Veto might be close to it. But I don't see them actually at captain level at this point. And I figured if, if Noelle could actually defeat her, that would show that Noelle actually is power-wise close to captain level, most likely around vice captain level when it comes to strength. And I guess you could actually argue that Noelle actually already is and that this chapter already proved that she's at least at that level of strength because of the fact that, all right, during the fight between the two of them, we see Noelle actually go all out to use her water dragon's roar to attack Fauna. And she literally blows off the top half of Fana's body. So in this chapter, Noelle actually proved how strong she already was. Because of the fact that if Fana didn't already have the Phoenix healing magic, which has already been shown in, in the series to be basically OP healing magic. Plus on top of that, she's able to actually use it, despite the top half of her body being destroyed. Because of the, the reincarnation forbidden magic that she's already under. Noelle would have won this fight. Any other opponent, that would have killed. The fact that Fauna is only alive right now because she's basically using cheap magic to fight against Noelle proves that Noelle actually is already pretty powerful. We already knew that her and Asta were most likely the two outside of Yami, the two strongest fighters in the Black Wolves. But now this actually confirms that I would believe Noelle is at Vice Captain level when it comes to fighting abilities. So yeah, and I guess if even if Yuno showed up and actually has to help her take out uh, Fauna, We've already in this chapter, in the like few pages where you get to see the fight, established how strong Noel already is. But then again, at the same time, you also got to factor in the fact that it's not just strength that determines what level you are in the series. It also, you know, your battle abilities, your strategy, your planning, exactly how you use your abilities. That actually factors in as well. So actually, yeah, no, I don't want you know to join into this fight because I want to see how Noel handles the fight herself. And as soon as we figure out exactly how she handles the fight herself, that, in my opinion, will finally establish where she is power-wise in the ranking system of Black Clover. But yeah, that's pretty much it for the chapter. If I had to say, I would be hoping in next week's chapter that we focus mostly on Mimosa and uh, ask the fight against Lil so we can actually see what happens in that fight, get that one out of the way, just, you know, have that chapter to be the sole chapter for it. And then we go for, like, maybe two or three chapters with Noelle versus uh, Fauna. Maybe like two chapters with Noelle and with the two of them fighting solo. And then one chapter where Yuno finally shows up and actually helps her out in the fight. But yeah, guys, that's it for the chapter. That's it for the review. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. If you did, drop me a like, subscribe to the channel. I greatly appreciate it. Comment down below your thoughts and theories. Uh, hopefully this weekend I can actually have my Attack on Titan chapter 114 review done. I've been trying to do it. I actually had one day to record it. Try recording it four times. The video got corrupted each time. Said fuck it, gave up. And now, hopefully, either tonight or tomorrow, I will have the time to actually sit down and record it for the fifth time and actually finally get that out there because it's Attack on Titan. I don't want to miss a review. I don't want to miss a review of that. But uh, yeah, that's it for the video, guys. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you later. Peace.